All right. Good evening, everybody. How y'all doing? This your boy, Rob Thomas Jr., and this is the real news behind the news. Oh, uh, yeah. Today is Tuesday, September 10th, 2019. And uh, briefly, I'm going to uh, explain to you all how your government has everybody here hypnotized, basically. I'm talking about literally deceived as to what 9-11 really was all about. And why everybody right now is screaming the opioid crisis. If you cannot put the opioid crisis together with 9-11, that means you are not as conscious as you would like to think. That means that you don't think and ask more questions. Now, let me break this down real fast. On um, two th- uh, September 11, 2001, you had two planes run into a building. I mean, to two of your other world, twin, the, the Twin Towers. They were two buildings, but they ran into these buildings. And they basically caused the collapse of the building and um, causing the, uh, almost 3,000 people to die. Now, my heart goes out to those 3,000 people because they were innocent victims in something that's bigger than what we all can figure out, but it affects us every day when it comes down to the opioid crisis. First and foremost, there is no way through the laws of physics, through engineering, through anything, those buildings was the came what was was supposed to have come down like they came. Because first and foremost, when you look at those buildings, that was a controlled uh, demolition, meaning that countless of witnesses tells you that there was a lot of construction work going on right before. Uh, I, uh, excuse me, Miss Thomas, I get right back with you. There was a lot of construction going on during, uh, in, those, uh, in those twin towers before those planes hit them. And what was happening, they were weakening the infrastructure of that building. The way those planes hit those buildings physically, I mean, uh, I mean, there was no way, literally, ask any engineer that those, pl- those buildings were to come down in the manner that they came down because they fell down upon themselves. Go on YouTube and look at a controlled <laughs> demolition, and you're going to see those buildings came down, which means that they were pre-planned. The whole purpose was, and let me get to the point, it was to get to that dope over in Afghanistan. Since that moment there, the United States government has been in Afghanistan, Afghanistan almost 20 years now. And since in that 20 years, guess what happened? Your opioid crisis around the world has increased by almost a thousand percent. Afghanistan is the leading producer of heroin, opium. So if you're not putting two to two, two and two together and realizing that Bush and all them people really did run those planes <laughs> into those buildings so that they can get over into Afghanistan to get that dope. Just like when they were going down to Nicaragua getting cocaine and bringing it back here, creating it into crack and putting it into our neighborhood. You'll never understand what 9-11 is really about, man. 9-11 was nothing more than a psychological false flag operated against us to allow to allow us to be the uh, um, willing participants to send our kids over to Afghanistan so that these drug dealers, your pharmaceutical companies, and all your politicians that support them to uh, make billions of dollars. Do you realize since we've been in Afghanistan, we've spent over $2 trillion in the last 19 years? This is what you and I as American taxpayers have paid. But guess how much the dope dealers, your CIA, your uh, uh, NSA, your FBI, and all them other alphabet uh, alphabet boys, guess how much they made off all this dope that they've been bringing from Afghanistan in the last 20 years? Think I'm lying? I mean, we can go to Hollywood and look at the story of Frank Lucas, American Gangster with Denzel, where they were telling you how doing a, a Vietnam, I mean, they were Vietnam or Korea. They were taking all that heroin. They created a whole war to take heroin and other drugs from other countries and bring them back here and put it on our street. So in reality, it ain't really a black thing. It's a black and white thing because now opioids, which is a derivative from the opium, that they're getting in Afghanistan is affecting white people's children now. 
Only difference is that when it was black kids, it was an epidemic. Now it's a crisis. So they use different wording, but either way it go, your government is going to have everybody in America trying to feel all patriotic. And what I feel sorry for are the people who lost their lives as a fucking a sacrifice. So your pharmaceutical companies and your drug dealing CIA and all these entities could continue their illegal wars and their uh, profiting. Because you look at it now, how many of these pharmaceutical companies are getting sued? But in reality, when they get, matter of fact, in Louisiana, y'all should be even more, I think it's Abraham who's running for government, go governor. This dude here, Abraham, that's running for governor, is one parish here in, free, in Louisiana. I, I forget the name of it. But he was the main doctor in that parish, and he prescribed over a million some opioid pills to over 6,000 people. But he's running for governor. Your uh, pharmaceutical companies during the opioid crisis started a, an addiction wave that only thing that rivaled it was the crack cocaine epidemic with all these opioids, man. So they put these opioids out there now these little white kids get hooked on them. It's a crisis, but it's the same thing because your government did the same thing when they gave us crack cocaine in our neighborhood. So now they're going to have you feeling all patriotic tomorrow, talking about we must go and fight the Taliban. Well, then Donald Trump just, they came over here looking for peace. They came over here just the other day, was trying to come over here to uh, basically meet with Donald Trump. To say, look, man, y'all been in our country too long. Get the fuck on. Basically, that's what that meeting was really about. Because we know we ain't won no war in, in Afghanistan. Ain't no war really in, with Afghanistan. The war is for the dope that Afghanistan possesses. That's what it's really all about. But they're going to have y'all sitting up here crying tomorrow on TV. You know, and we, again, our hearts shed tears for the victim, innocent victims that got caught up in this bullshit. But look how many innocent victims right now in the black neighborhood doing 30 years, you know what I'm saying, for selling two crack rocks. You see what I'm saying? So if we're going to do anything, we should hold our government accountable and ask them, really, what did really happen on 9-11? We know Bush now. You know, basically trying to get that pipeline going through Afghanistan because Bush was what? An oil man. It was really about an oil pipeline, but most importantly, it was about the dope. So I say this right now because I ain't going to say nothing about it tomorrow on 9-11. I'm going to let people have their day. But you can rest of sure on 9-12. I'm going to come back with another video and tell you that it's all bullshit, man. It's about dope, man. These folks ain't giving a fuck about the American citizen because they killed almost 4,000 of them on 9-11-2001. Uh, they literally murdered those people so they can get you to go uh, send your kids over to Afghanistan. Cause think about this. I'm going to show y'all some real, and this is simple, but it's gangster. This is the whole point that everybody misses. If it was 19 hijackers, 17 of them was from Saudi Arabia. Why did they go and commence to bomb Iraq and Afghanistan? Come on, man. It's just real simple. They already was finna knock Saddam Hussein off because he took his his country off the petrodollar and he was going to sell his oil. But they wanted a pipeline to go through Afghanistan. You see what I'm saying? It was, it was about Saudi Arabia pushing America um, basically to a point where they knew that they had to get rid of these th these three countries, which was Saudi Arabia's rival rivals. So we, as Americans uh, here, had to pay for our president giving these people billions of dollars. It's real deep, and I ain't gonna go off into all that. That's a whole nother video. But it was Saudi Arabia and United States who created 9/11. So that they can weaken Afghanistan, Iraq, Syria, and now Iran. So this is what's really going on. And it's a lot deeper. And I don't really have the time to explain it all in one video. But I'm telling y'all, don't believe that bullshit they're going to come to y'all with tomorrow. You're going to see them, you know, saying I'm proud to be an American. When America went over there and fucked over all them countries, dog. Think about it. What country in the Middle East? that we brought so-called democracy to 
is doing better. Look at Libya. They selling slaves openly. Iraq, they telling us to get the fuck out. Syria is telling us to get the fuck out. <laughs> All these countries that we have a bomb since 9-11 talk about the war on terrorism. They telling us to get the fuck out. So it's, it's, it's deep, man. And I just, again, I did this video on the spirit of the moment. I knew I was supposed to sit down and planned it out and had writing and talking points. But now, nah, I'm just keeping it real, man. 9-11 was an event that was created, man, to get you to first and foremost surrender your rights, but most importantly, get you willing to send your kids over there to die so that your pharmaceutical companies, so that your CIA, your NSA, and all these other government agencies can go over there and take them folks dope and make money. Because since we've been in Afghanistan, guess what? Heroin addiction... Um, Oxycontin addiction, lower tab addiction, every addiction that is related to opioids has multiplied by a thousand percent. Now you're seeing commercials where they're telling us, if you got an opioid problem, you can come to rehab. When in reality, when we had a crack problem, they was like sending them niggas to prison. That's really how it goes. And that's how it is. Y'all be blessed.